Hello and welcome to Tal Capes, where we cover film, television, comics, and games. I'm your host, Cody Nestor. Alongside me is my co-host, Todd Hill. What's going on, guys? Today we're discussing 2002 Batman story, Hush. In this story of murder, mystery, and romance, Batman sets out on a simple mission to discover the identity of the mysterious villain wreaking havoc in his life known as Hush. But Batman ends up facing possibly the most intense case of his life as secrets from his past flood into the present and the most notorious villains to ever haunt Gotham City Street attack simultaneously. Published by DC, written by Jeff Loeb, with art by Jim Lee, Scott Williams, and Alex Sinclair, the first issue of the Hush storyline, Batman number 608, was released on October 23, 2002. The Batman Hush 20th Anniversary Edition was released on October 22, 2022. So, Todd, let's discuss Hush. Spoilers are ahead. All right. So, Todd, let's uh, start by talking about the creators of this book. So, we okay. got uh, Jeff Loeb and Jim Lee. So let's start with Loeb. Where does he rank amongst the all-time Batman writers for you? Uh, you know, honestly, he's, he's pretty high up there. I mean, I think I would, you know, maybe maybe Frank Miller above there. Uh all-star uh, Batman, right? All, <laughs> not that one, though. <laughs> uh, Denny O'Neill comes to mind. Uh, there's some uh, great ones there in the early 90s. But, uh, I mean, Jeff Loeb is up there. You know, uh, Long Halloween, Dark Victory, this. Uh, mm -hmm. He's done some great Batman stuff. Yeah, speaking of uh, kind of his other works, would you say is Hush his best Batman story? Ooh, that's a tough one. Long Halloween is awesome. It's, it's, it, can we say too close to call right now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, as much as I love Hush, and, and we'll kind of get into that as we go, you know, Hush was, I've told this kind of story before, but Hush is the, the book uh, that got me into comic books, Batman number 610. I pilfered through your copy of it, your your <laughs> floppy copy of it, as it was laying on the table as you arrived home. Uh, it's the, the comic that got me into into uh, into comics. But uh, for me, I still think I would give the, the, the edge to the long Halloween. But I think you're right. It's one yeah. A and one B, really. Yeah. I mean, this this is really this is really kind of Jeff Lobb and Jim Lee's Batman greatest hits. I think so. Yeah. Is really what it is. Uh, so switching over to Jim Lee, uh, is he on your Mount Rushmore for Batman artists? Ooh, uh, yeah. Of just, you got four of just Batman. I would probably say he's there. I would probably go Jim Aparo, uh, Neil Adams, uh, Jim Lee. You got one more. Boy, who would be my fourth? Mm, mm. It's a tough one. I don't know. That would be tough. I don't know. You have a mystery slot open. I for really it. like some stuff that Norm Brayfogle did back in the 90s. I thought he did an interesting take on Batman. I have no idea who that is, but I'll take okay. your word for it. I might yeah. go Norm Brayfogle there. Okay. <laughs> is that controversial, folks? Tell us in the comments. <laughs> uh, so what is it about Lee's Batman, uh, his work on Batman that you like? Uh, as to me, it's just his art style. I Best way I can describe it, describe it is Jim Lee has this art style where you want to linger on the page because you're afraid you're missing something. A lot of details. It's in that it. detailed. It's yeah. that it's that specific. I, I I love it. I know some people like Jim Lee, some people don't. Right. I'm definitely in a pro Jim Lee camp. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I think I think for me he's definitely on my Mount Rushmore. Like I don't there's he's probably takes my number one spot. I don't know of an artist like if I if I like could steal someone's talent, like in like you know Space Jam. Mm -hmm. uh, like if I could Jim have Lee's? him touch a pencil and take his power, I yeah. would take Jim Lee's. Like he's just his art style, and it's not just. I think it's something I should mention too. Like his work with Scott Williams and Alex Sinclair is what makes it even more. Yeah, the color and inks that they provide to it, it's like perfect. Like him by himself is still good, but if he's not working with those two, it's not the same level. Yeah. So like they that trio like in this book is like perfect. But yeah, he he's definitely my like my number one. But like his like you said, it's a lot of detail, sometimes to the detriment of his work, because like, you know, something like we I just kind of offhandedly mentioned All-Star Batman, that suffered from never coming out, never being on time weekly. Yeah, I don't think it ever actually finished. Never it. actually, it never yeah. finished. I think it got 10 issues in. But I mean, like, you know, just the detail, like you see, you know, on the cover for Batman 608, you see the detail in the boot. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the every little tread and every little thing of the boot. Like, not many artists go to that length. They'll, they'll frame the panel in a way that doesn't have to show the bottom of that boot. But you get the details. There's also things as we go through this series, if I can remember them, to hopefully point out that people I'm sure have noticed over the years, but little things in the background, little secrets and little Easter eggs. But, yeah, yeah I mean, definitely as detailed a panel most of the time as you'll, as you'll kind of find. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so, so take me back to October 2002. Tom. Oh, man, this has been uh, almost a Halloween issue, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> it would have been. Uh, what was your relationship with comics back then, and how did you feel about Hush the first time you read it? Uh, back then, I think I was still buying them at a local store, and uh, in the town I lived in, we never had a comic book store proper. Uh, I was fortunate that there was a bookstore in town. There was a gentleman that worked there, and he, he was into comics. Yeah. He was able to keep like an entire section of that store pretty much just devoted to comics, and I got my books from him for a long time. I'm pretty sure I was still getting it from him when this came out. Uh, Reading it as it come out, this was one of those, you know, I couldn't wait for the next issue. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just, you know, just waiting. Just the anticipation of it was killing me. Yeah, I remember, <laughs> like I said, I come on with Batman 16. I went back that same, I think, the, that day I read your copy. I told my mom, I was like, hey, we got to go to uh, X bookstore because mm -hmm. I got to get 608 and 609 and see how that started. And from there, you know, we would talk about it weekly. We had the infamous like 4 a.m. <laughs> one night we talked to like 4 in the morning trying to figure yeah. out who's hush. Yeah, me and this guy stayed on the phone. <laughs> I don't know what time we started, but we was on the phone till 4 o'clock in the morning trying to figure out who hush was. Who was <laughs> yeah, exactly. And all as we go through this, you'll see why like it, 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 it takes a lot of figuring and who, who do you think it is. There's a lot of red herrings in this yeah. story. I would say. Uh, so, Todd, let's get into the story. Uh, let's start with part one, The Ransom. Todd, where does our story begin? So we begin in the sewers of Gotham City. Uh, Batman's down there. Uh, he's looking for Killer Croc. Uh, actually, Croc has done something a little out of character for him, which Batman mentions a few times. He's actually kidnapped a kid, held him for ransom. Yeah, Batman says at one point he's not smart enough to have done that on yeah. his own. Uh, Batman's kind of making his way through some goons just down there, kind of, I guess, working with Croc, kind of, you know, describing some of their stuff, how to take them out. Yeah, let me let me go through those real quick. Batman takes down Nails Nathan <laughs> with uh, a small poison tip batarangs. Mm -hmm. Batman takes down uh, Tommy Harper with a magnet to the metal plate in his head, giving him vertigo. Mm -hmm. Batman takes down Carlos Valdez by roping him up because he's a big guy, likes to fight in close. Batman takes down Spider Hancock, not Spider Rico, Todd. Not Spider Rico, Spider, Spider Hancock, Hancock. By exploding his two broken ribs that he previously uh, broke three nights ago. Mm. And then we see he interrogates Hancock, and then uh, uh, I'll let you pick up from there. So uh, Batman goes into this little, he actually blows the door of this little sealed room where the, the kidnapped boys being held. Edward Lamont IV. Uh, yep, and we get that, uh, the title page where it says Batman Hush, chapter one the ransom, Batman's walking through that door. Badass, badass Batman shot right here. <laughs> yeah, so let, let's pause right here. Yeah, so the the all of our, I think I think it holds true the whole series, at least this first three issues that we're looking at, our introductory page of the introductory, the story title pages, all full page, mm -hmm. uh, and we get Batman, like I said, coming through that door. Um, I love Jim Lee, but I always felt in this in this particular book and that panel especially, mm -hmm. Batman was a little too bulky. A little bulky. Um, looking at it now, that arm looks a little thick. <laughs> uh, in in this, we read the from the 20th anniversary edition. Mm -hmm. So there's actually like you know kind of a little uh, question and answer section before uh, in in that book. And Jim Lee himself admitted he regretted how boxy he made Batman at the start. He even toyed with the idea of redrawing the entire first issue because he had already had six or seven issues drawn before they even started publication. Mm -hmm. But he was kind of talked out of it. But it's definitely something he kind of admitted to. He kind of learned how to draw Batman man better in the series as it went on. I'm not saying it's bad, but like it's a little inconsistent. He's a little bulky, a little bulky, a little bulky to start. What do you think about uh, the design of Batman here, specifically Jim Lee's design and his, his version of Batman? I think it's awesome. I like how he still has the uh, pouches type belt. Yes. I like the single bat. Uh, I think I like that it's still, you know, it's not really the lighter blue, but it's still blue. Blue, mm -hmm. and you just highlight it with the black shadows right. and stuff. Are you a um, are you a single bat or a sim or yellow bat symbol guy? I love them both, but I f I think I do like the single bat better. All right. So uh, here's here's one for you. So do you prefer would you do you prefer a bulkier Bruiser Dark Knight Returns type Batman or like a leaner Neil Adams style Batman? Uh, I think the more leaner, more almost, not quite maybe a gymnast, but more my, maybe a leaner, leaner, meaner type Batman. Right. Yeah, I always, you know, I, I enjoy both. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. Like, I love the Dark Knight Returns. I love the bulky Batman. It fits that because he's older and, like, mm -hmm. he can't rely on speed, so you got to rely on strength. It's, yep. you know, that kind of thing. The Rocky Balboa film. Right. You got to got the hurting bombs, Todd, you know, kind of thing. Right. Like, you got to kind of rely on that. But, yeah, overall, in my head, I like kind of a leaner, you mm -hmm. know, Neil Adams type Batman. 
man. Uh, but uh, pick us up here, Todd. So uh, Batman is commenting through this thing, and he's only got a certain number of minutes to get that kid in and out before Croc shows back up. And yeah. I think he makes a comment. He missed it by 11 seconds. 11 seconds, Because yeah. Croc shows back up, and uh, – that splash page of like the kid, Batman, and Croc taking that swing at him, ah, that's bad. Yeah, bad as hell. yeah. Uh, and then uh, one thing too, Batman kind of mentions is how how he he wonders to himself how Clark would handle the situation, right? How Superman would handle the situation. But yeah, that two page introduction to Killer Croc, uh, Croc looks much more like Monstrous. monster like. Uh, I think Batman remarks about how he looks later on looks more savage than human, right? Uh, and then in that page too, and that in that. That panel of uh, we see in the background, we see Catwoman slinking around. She's actually in the back of that panel, if you notice, Tom. Oh, yeah, right there. She there. is. <laughs> yeah. Again, little details, mm-hmm. little things. She's actually slinking around in the back of that uh, in the back of that scene. What do you think of the, the design of Killer Croc here? Yeah, he's really, like you said, he's really monstrous looking here, I think. My personal preference, I like a more almost humanoid looking Croc. But, I mean, for this story. Like in the Suicide Squad movie? No, not not. <laughs> Let's strike that from the record. Right. Uh, there are earlier versions of Croc where he looks more, you know, he's he Croc human hybrid. So right. this is more monster, not even really a man anymore. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it works for this story. Yeah. And for the parameters of Hush, this is a good look for him. And Jim Lee draws it well. Yeah, I mean, it, it, even in, in the story, too, like, I, you know, I think Croc is being mutated. and like Somebody's done this done to him. Done this to him. And, like, he's not, it's not just, the design is not just this, just to be this. There's, like, kind of a narrative reason for it. But I agree with you. I kind of don't mind the design, but I would, I would in my head, if I would, had a, a perfect idealized version, I'd scale the monster aspects back a little, right, right. little bit back from it. But continue. So uh, Croc's giving Batman the old two-piece and a biscuit. <laughs> uh, he's bashing him around with the suitcase full of ransom money. Uh, oh, yeah, I love the little, that, that page where it's got, like, the blood spatter on the, the briefcase. Right. Looks Batman's awesome. got some blood on his mouth where he's took a big punch mm-hmm. right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Croc goes in to you know, bash him with his head. Batman ducks it, comes back up, hits him with his head, uh, gives him a boot to the face. We see the briefcase gets knocked free, and somebody kind of grapples that thing out of there. Yeah, exactly. A grappling hook kind of plucks it away uh, while Batman and kind of Croc kind of fight. Uh, Batman exploits Croc's vulnerability to uh, hypersonics. I think he says 10,000 bumblebees at uh, 1,000 decibels to kind of put Croc down. So Batman kind of beaks Croc. Edward cheers. Batman shuts that shit down immediately. (laughs) He's like, be quiet, Edward. (laughs) Yeah. Um, FBI kind of swarm in, uh, Batman activates his, uh, kind of heat sensor in his cow kind of spots Catwoman because they're like, what happened to the money? Yeah. The money's obviously gone. It's uh, on the move. Uh, one thing that it, it, it's, I think it's seen, uh, w- like once in this and then I think it's seen again in 609, but I like the design of Batman's grapple hook. Oh, it's yeah. just like his grapple gun, like mm-hmm. just, uh, it's just a neat kind of little interesting design yep. to me. Uh, talk about Batman and Catwoman, Todd. So he uh, grapples off, and he's in pursuit of her. They're kind of, you know, she's kind of grappling. I think she's grappling as well, and he's grappling kind of right behind her. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's almost just getting ready to reach out and overtake her when somebody uh, shoots and snaps the bat line. Yes, and this is uh, this kind of reminded me, just kind of watching it again, obviously this came before, but this kind of reminded me of Under the Red Hood, yeah. where Batman talks about, like, you know, like there's only a few people that know how to cut my lines, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. So, like, again, like, you know, someone cutting the bat rope, and, like, we see Batman, uh, he tries to stop his fall by grabbing onto a gargoyle, shoulder breaks, mm-hmm. his body betrays him, he says. He falls into Park Row, which is Crime Alley. Crime Alley of uh, all places. Yeah, every bum there is just ready to kill him on sight for some reason <laughs> just like on sight batman you ever drop into crime alley it's, you ever come down it's here on sight mm. bats uh we see Catwoman has brought the money to poison ivy, poison ivy. Uh, and has her under her control and she tells her you know that no man or woman can resist and i know i can't <laughs> yeah it's a very nicely drawn poison ivy i must say it is uh i have a note about it as we kind of move forward but uh Jim, i'll just kind of bring it in here jim lee i think uh, really uh, does a great job with drawing females mm-hmm. compared to some artists that I think struggle with it a little bit more. Com- drawing males, they do a great job, but not as well. It's not as strong with female characters. I think Jim Lee, sometimes they, they tend to, when they're not um, costumed or when they're not poison ivy or like they're not, they don't have a distinct look. Like if you just have a blonde versus brunette, sometimes they, they, they have a lot of the same features right. and stuff. But I mean, when you're, when you're talking about design to characters, like I think he does a great job of drawing mm-hmm. women. 
Uh, so this is the end of issue one, Todd. Not going to review these or anything as we go through. We're going to, I'll talk about how we're going to review this as a whole later on. But like, just overall thoughts of this opening issue as, as uh, kind of get us into the story. Just a, I mean, a strong start. I mean, right out of the gate, you get a, you get a big battle with Killer Croc. Uh, you kind of get the inference that something's going on here. This ain't what Croc would normally do. Somebody's mutating him. He don't look like himself. Yeah, you see the briefcase get stolen. Batman's about to overtake Catwoman, but you know who shot that bat line? Yeah, uh, again here we have a, we have a mystery figure mm-hmm. at play. We've got uh, as we go through this story, Batman's Rogues Gallery here. It's just the greatest hits. This is how Jeff Love kind of intended the story to kind of show to let Jim Lee draw as many Batman characters and DC characters as possible since he was coming over to DC. You get Killer Croc right off the bat. His design for that. You get to see his Catwoman, which I think is a really great design. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you get his version of Poison Ivy, and then we have our mystery character in the background that is uh, kind of yet unforeseen. Yep. Uh, so, Todd, uh, let's talk about part two, The Friend. Yes, yeah, 609. 609. So take us through 609, Todd. So we kind of open back in the alley. Batman is on the ground. Uh, all the bums of Crime Alley are, you know, getting ready to, you know, pretty much have their way with him. Yeah. One of them reaches for his mask and sets off a kind of a defense mechanism of some gas, gassing him out of the, gassing him out of the face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of a bum with a pipe is he's kind of electrocuted when he kind yep. of contacts his suit. Oracle, you know, she can't get him to respond. I like that his, his code name is Blackbird. Right. She says Blackbird is down. Uh, and who arrives to save... Uh, Save Todd. Save oh, Todd. Who, who who's going to arrive to save me? Who will come to save you, Cody, Todd? Cody, I've wanted to know the answer to that question for almost 50 some. <laughs> <laughs> who, who arrives to save Batman? It's none other than the Huntress. And our, another our title page, Chapter 2, The Friend. Uh, this is an awesome shot of the Huntress on her bike. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about the Huntress design here? Very, very 90s. Very, it's very 90s take. Very 90s kind of update of the costume. But it, I could say for, it works. It works. It works. She comes in on her her huntress bike and i think um, it's a good it's a good it's a good spread there and like i i like the design i think it works and here it is a little 90s shows a lot of skin but yeah it works it works, it works. so she starts dispatching the bums uh you know beating them off uh <laughs> she beats them off <laughs> <laughs> Just, just, the huntress doesn't do that folks <laughs> a bum calls her bat girl pisses her yeah, off pisses her off makes her mad yeah Batman's kind of remarking to himself that uh, she's better than she knows, but she spends yep. too much time trying to prove it. Yeah, actually, I think and then towards the end of the fight, the, the Batmobile, I guess, is remotely sent to pick him up. Uh, yeah. They kind of, he gets kind of shuffled off. Uh, Hunters are still kind of, is there anything else I can do? What y'all need? <laughs> yeah. It's gone. <laughs> uh, one note about the, the Batmobile. The first shot you get the Batmobile is pretty basic looking. But then yeah. uh, there's a second shot we see we get more detail of it. It's kind of a hybrid between old and new. I say old because you get that bat-shaped battering ram from like the Batmobiles of like the 40s and the 50s. Yeah, you I got it that. up front kind of prominent. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, at, at the end of that scene, when the uh, Batmobile is kind of squalling ass out of that alley, uh, <laughs> you see a uh, sort of bandaged face in a trench coat looking down on top of a building. Yeah, he says, without friends, no one would choose to live, though he had all other goods. Ah. <laughs> so from there, we go to uh, Poison Ivy, and uh, she's trying to uh, deliver the money to someone else. Yeah, so she's uh, delivering their half, mm-hmm. quote unquote, of the money to a mystery figure who immediately disappears. She's out in the street, like, huh? mm-hmm. what? 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 What's going on here? <laughs> I really like the uh, the two page spread that you get of Alfred trying to mend Bruce. Bruce mm-hmm. is just laying broken on the the, the operating table. Basically, uh, he says, you know, his Bruce's injuries are far too beyond Alfred's skills to repair. You see Bruce using Morse code yeah. to uh, to kind of signal. He thinks it, uh, he thinks uh, initially that he's talking. He's saying Thomas in Morse code. I think he's talking about his father. He's like delusional, but he's actually uh, calling the name Thomas Elliot. So who is Thomas Elliot, Todd? So we discover that uh, Thomas Elliot is an old childhood friend of Bruce's. Uh, I guess they were kind of almost best friends in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's kind of grown up to be like a, a major, like a brain surgeon. Mm-hmm. He comes into, uh, we see Batman in the hospital getting ready to be operated on by Tommy. Tommy kind of enters and he's got like this kind of cock of the walk attitude. Yeah. He's like, what does everyone look so serious? It's only brain surgery <laughs> right look at me <laughs> like that kind of thing and then we we get um something that that comes up a lot in uh in the books here we get a flashback of bruce 
Uh, and Tommy is as as a boys. They're playing chess against each other. Chess, chest, mm-hmm. not chest, <laughs> chess against each other. And uh, it's cool to see Jim Lee kind of he get he got to experiment with like a painted style, like kind of mm-hmm. watercolor style. And like again for flashbacks, it works absolutely perfect yep. for 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 a flashback in a comic book. That changing that style up from his normal style to kind of a more painterly kind of watercolor style absolutely works yep. phenomenally. Uh, we also see kind of in that that Tommy was always kind of one step ahead of Bruce. Like yeah, you kind of get that inference. Yeah, yeah he, he they're playing chess together. Why well, keep saying chess? <laughs> they keep bumping each other's chest. Who chests. are you thinking about? I don't know. <laughs> Ready to play chess, Bruce? <laughs> they're playing chess together, and uh, he's always kind of one step ahead of him. Um, we see kind of uh, back to uh, you know Bruce out of surgery. Uh, the cover for this is uh, Oracle had Dick wreck the Porsche. Yeah, <laughs> that's the see, cover story. They see that it's always like always a cover story. It's like if anything happens to Batman, he wrecked his car. Yeah, Bruce Wayne does something stupid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you kind of see the news reporting about Batman's accident. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, wondering if his what his blood alcohol content and all that kind of stuff right, could right. be. Uh, we see kind of a headline. Uh, you see a headline on a newspaper. It says Wayne out of danger, and I love how that is framed against a very menacing looking Tommy Elliot, oh, yeah. I would say. He looks kind of a uh, sus right there. Yeah, exactly. It's a good good kind of way to frame it. It's actually a cover of the Daily Planet photo by Jimmy Olsen. I didn't even notice that. But <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. That's what it says. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the the final thing that we get at the end of the issue is that we see a mystery figure, our mystery figure from our, our first issue, reading the newspaper, and he says, we make war that we may live in peace. Mm. And that's the end of issue number two. So 609, Todd... Thoughts here for 609, kind of keep picking up the story. Again, it's just you, it's getting you more involved in that mystery. Like, who is this guy cutting up that paper at the end? What does he mean to all this? And then you're, you're at this point, you're reading this, and anybody listening maybe never have read this book, but you're like, well, obviously it's Tommy Elliott that's Hush, right? Yeah. And you're like, yeah, probably. Why do they introduce him now after now, all these after years? After all these years, okay, a a heretofore unseen childhood friend of Batman comes into the picture and there there is a uh, a yet unseen new mystery villain. Well, it's got to be that guy, right? Yeah. Well, you think that. And then you kind of get a lot of red hangs here as mm-hmm. we'll get into the other issues and it starts to make you second guess yourself yeah. as you kind of go forward. So let's go ahead and we'll talk about uh, part three, Todd, The Beast. The Beast. So what happens in The Beast? So we open up, uh, Batman has gone to uh, visit Killer Croc. Were they holding him in Arkham? He was in Arkham, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, he's kind of there to kind of, you know, what do you know, Croc? You know, who puts you on this ransom gig? This ain't your thing. Right. It's not your bad, (laughs) Yeah, it's not your, you know. And uh, Croc kind of uh, busts out. You know, Mm -hmm. he busts up some guards. He makes his way out and he escapes. But we figure out that was Batman's plan the whole time. Right. Because he had a tracker on him. He's like, you know, he's going to lead me to that briefcase of money and whoever set him up. Mm -hmm. We also see uh, Amanda Waller. Amanda Waller. She kind of sees Batman, his plan. She says, I don't like this. Batman replies, I don't like you. Yeah. (laughs) Batman and Amanda Waller never really have saw eye to eye. (laughs) Uh, This book is technically out of continuity at this point uh but at this point in time amanda waller she was uh she heads up president luthor's office of metahuman yes. affairs it says at this time in the comics mm-hmm. uh, luthor was president <laughs> believe it or not believe it or not <laughs> uh meanwhile back at wayne manor uh tommy elliott visits uh wayne manor and talks to alfred or alf yeah calls, he, alf. calls him. <laughs> he uh he's there to, to kind of check on bruce of course uh, bruce is not there he's out batman and around alfred has to kind of make up an excuse that right. uh, he's off to see about a lady or something like that i think he says and then we get a flashback uh another flashback here what's going on in that flashback Todd so we kind of flashed to uh I think it was Tommy has showed up at uh the, the Wayne Manor and he's kind of saying you know Bruce is like what are you doing here this time of night I think right. he calls him a knucklehead right and he's like you know there's been an accident you know my mom and my dad their car mm-hmm. and we kind of go to the hospital and we find out that you know Tommy's parents you know his, his dad he kind of drove them that night they had a chauffeur but he didn't go mm-hmm. uh, there's been an accident you know and Bruce is kind of like you know my dad's the best surgeon there he is Thomas your, Wayne yep. your parents are going to be fine well right. his mother does make it but unfortunately his father doesn't 
And uh, Tommy just goes off the rails. He's like, you promised me they'd be all right. Yeah, just, Actually punches him. Yeah, punches Bruce in the face for promising it would all mm-hmm. be all right as he's kind of embraced by uh, Bruce's father, Thomas Wayne. Still sitting up some stuff here like, you know, Tommy Elliott had a reason early on, really maybe not to like Bruce anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, very. Uh, he also has a, a very, another tragic backstory just, mm-hmm. just as Bruce would come to have yeah. later on. Bruce lost both parents. Tommy lost one so far. So far, yeah. Uh, back in the present day, we kind of see that Batman is tracking Croc using uh, that home advice that was planted into him from Arkham. Right. Uh, while he's driving, the tire of the Batmobile is shot out. He's shot out. Here we go to the line. His his bat rope line was cut. Now the Batmobile uh, tire was shot out. Batman mentions that the Batmobile has Kevlar reinforced tires filled with petroleum jelly, the sort of tire they use in presidential motorcades, and a blowout is next to impossible. Yeah. So someone would have to Somebody, kind of know, yeah. know the inner workings there of a uh, Batman and uh, <laughs> where he gets his tires from. Where he gets his tires from. I don't think from. he gets those from Michelin. No. <laughs> I don't think those were good years. No. Nah, nah. uh, Croc kind of confronts Catwoman at uh, Ivy's penthouse. Right. Ivy Ivy's kind of set Catwoman up to kind of be killed by Croc, kind of kind of take her off the board. Yep. Uh, but Batman arrives and fights Croc. Uh, it, the, I don't know why, but this panel always has stuck out to me. Like when I think about this book, it's always been a panel that I enjoyed. Um, it's one of my favorites. During that fight, there's a point where Batman fires his grapnel gun. Mm-hmm. He's kind of like has his arm out and he's telling Catwoman to move. Yeah. And it's always just been a really one of my favorite panels for some reason. It's just a small panel, but I've always yeah. just liked the I'm look of it. Right I like now, the yeah. look of that panel you kind of see like his armor underneath his like torn suit Mm -hmm. and stuff it's just always been a panel that i really like enjoyed um but what happens at uh, ivy's penthouse todd so croc kind of gets grappled outside uh he get bangs his head against the side of a wall uh batman's kind of out there getting ready to have like this final interrogation scene with him trying to figure out maybe what the hell's going on Mm -hmm. amanda waller and the fbi goons show up haul (laughs) croc away yeah with an electrified net of some sort to haul his ass away so we go back uh, up into the, oh actually we see a, the Batman kind of sees that shadowy figure up on top of a building with a uh, Robin's, Robin's sign. sign yes uh, so again. our first uh, another possible red herring here yeah there's uh, you'll still see there's a lot of uh, red herrings there's a lot of Robin red herrings that mm-hmm. we'll kind of get into uh, and the figure says all men by nature desire knowledge and something about this book the way um, it's sh- the, the 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 text the lettering is done for uh, our mission history figure whose name is hush right. um his his lettering is done so that it should it's supposed to be interpreted that he talks in kind of a whisper right which is why his name is obviously hush, hush. <laughs> uh we see uh six night six, uh, can't talk todd six nights later uh, Batman's kind of been looking and, and been out on the streets for six nights searching. Batman, uh, he kind of speaks with Catwoman on a rooftop. Uh, she tells him that Ivy's in Metropolis. They have a little kissy kissy time yeah. on top of the the rooftop there, kind of continue, you know, con- continuing the relationship that they've kind of had mm-hmm. and were developing uh, there in the comics at that time. They kind of embrace and have their kiss. Uh, those kind of Batman Catwoman scenes are used a lot in kind of the the additional like kind of uh, covers for this collected version of this book over and over mm-hmm. even this 20th anniversary has them kind of embracing it's like kind of the hush story set against kind of a little bit of their love story but there's not the if you look at the covers of some of the collected editions of this book you would think that that's a huge factor in the book but it's not as big a factor in the book as right. it, you would think if you just looked at the cover of these collected editions like it was like some type of love story with a mystery behind it yeah. it's really not that yeah. it's really m- way more of a, a offshoot of the main story than it is a focus I would say it's kind of almost like it's become more of an iconic shot than really it was but I mean yeah. Don't I, don't get me wrong. It's that last panel I'm looking at it now. That's you know if you think about this series, that's one of those iconic images that kiss. But right. As story wise, it that like you say, it doesn't really have that much to do with it. Right. Exactly. Overall, uh, during their embrace, uh, we kind of see um, our uh, Batman. He's kind of a. Uh, has his kind of internal narration and he says criminals by nature are a cowardly and superstitious lot to instill fear into their hearts i became a bat a monster in the night and in doing so have i become the very thing that all monsters become alone and that's how we end uh issue number three batman number 16 so that's the end of uh kind of our part one series todd so uh question here to kind of follow up this do these three issues still hold up for you todd 20 years later i would say so (laughs) i mean 
you know, uh, getting as old as I am, you know, if you forget a lot of things that you've read back in the day, and I don't think I've read this since it came out in Absolute Edition, and I think it's had a couple of maybe one reprint since then, so it's uh, been so a while. Just so. had a recent Omnibus too. Yeah, I got it. I want to pick that up so bad, but I hadn't done it yet. Uh, it's nice. I mean, you know, there are things even in his first three issues that I had forgotten. I knew the basic bones of the story. Mm -hmm. I kind of know where we're heading, but it's still an interesting read so far. Mm -hmm. I wanted to keep on going. Oh, yeah. Anytime you want to keep on going, it's still an interesting read. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Anything you'd change about the first three issues? Uh, You know, like I say, that, that croc design may be a little too much into monster territory and right. that's just a it gets a little busy sometimes yeah. i don't know where his eyes is yeah you don't know where <laughs> you don't know where his face he, uh, his features of his face really are yeah it comes off more of a that design kind of more is more reminiscent to me of like a spider-man's lizard true than it is croc than croc yeah. again i'm not i'm nitpicking here yeah that's just grasping for stuff yeah, honestly that's grasping for straws yeah, yeah again maybe uh you know uh Again, uh, Jim Lee was coming to this series, first time drawing Batman, major event, major publication, you know, a little bit boxy Batman in the mm -hmm. first few issues, but you see it start to, he catches his stride and it yeah. it gets better and better and better and the art gets better and better and better as the series goes. But man, anything that I would change is an absolutely complete nitpick. Yeah. Uh, last question I kind of have here for you, Todd, of the three issues, which has the best cover? Oh, let me scroll back through them. Just so the first sure. one, you've got 608. You've got Batman kind of uh, flying on the bat rope, kind of flying towards camera. Gotcha. Legs sticking out. 609, you've got the Batman kind of entrapped in Poison Ivy's vines, Catwoman on one side, mm -hmm. Poison Ivy on the other. And then 16, you've got Batman kind of pressed in battle against Croc. Killer Croc. I gotta go. I gotta go. The first one. I gotta go. Six oh eight. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think still six oh eight is still one of my favorites. Sixteen was the first I ever read, but six oh eight, the cover there, still my favorite. Uh, just kind of uh, a mention here. There was also the Batman six oh eight second printing cover. That was the one that was made into the the think the famous Jim Lee statue where he's a stepping on the gargoyle. Oh yeah, looking yeah. out over to the city. There's also the six oh eight retailers edition cover, which is used for a lot of the the media and stuff. It was like the cover of the the. So that's one where it's kind of like half Batman, half Hush. No, that's the the retailer's edition is the one where well, it might still be Batman, half Batman, half Hush, but it's like they're kind of like arms at, at, the at side. their sides, yeah. yes. And uh, that's the one that's used in a lot of media. It's used in that fucking horrible Batman Hush animated movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah, but uh, and also uh, another another cover that I really like the. Uh, after the success of uh, the first two issues when 16 come out, they did the Hush Double Feature. Double Feature, that I remember collected that. 608 and 609. There's a really great Hush Double Feature cover. Uh, this is the only uh, comic book I own two physical copies of every issue of the run and every cover except that retailer's edition. Yeah, I remember back in the day, me and you, we chased every single variant we could get a hold of. Yep, any got, double feature, yep, anything. I've got the double feature. I've got the 608 second printing. I've got every cover of every uh, issue except for the retailer's edition because it was way too expensive for me for 13-year-old me <laughs> without a job to afford. And I thought of, I've thought many times about tracking it down but it's it's almost damn near impossible to find a copy anymore of yeah. it but uh yeah other than a few random number ones here and there that's really the only physical comic books i own anymore is those hush runs like i have my original run that i bought off the book stands mm -hmm. I, I have your copies yeah i wanted i I got out of you know single issues and floppies a long time ago, and I I, I gave I, did I sell them to you? Or I you, give them to yeah, you. Yeah, you sold them to me. It was a fair price. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was a fair price. But I wanted him to stay, you know, with Cody because you know, you know, this was his like you say, this was your introduction was into mine. comics. Yeah, that's yeah, why that's, you got it and it's still in all those. And floppies. I've I've bought a lot of versions of it. I have trade paperbacks. I do want to get the omnibus. I have the absolute edition. I have uh there was a recent box set they did. Did you see where it was like I think Hush and the Dark Knight Returns and like maybe something else like in a, in a I, small yeah, form box that, yeah. set. I bought that as well. Like, you know, I'm not saying Hush is the my favorite Batman story ever. It's uh talking about Mount Rushmore. It's there. It's top mm -hmm. three. It 
maybe top two. Really, the only thing I can think I can put above it is Dark Knight Returns to right. me. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's the it's the book that got me in the comics. It started kind of my fandom and passion for for comics and the the medium as a whole. So I bought it in almost every format that I that I could find. I have yeah. a, I have a signed copy of Six Nineteen as well. Nice. Uh, maybe the guy running the comic book store may have signed it. We don't know. We don't know for we don't sure. Know. Where's your COA there's, on that? <laughs> there's some kind of half ass COA with it, Todd. I, I don't know. Uh, just for me though, I can't wait to jump back in, and I can't wait to read the next three issues. Like I said, I just wanted to keep going, but uh, you know, we got the next three issues coming up. Batman six twelve was always a standout to me. Mm-hmm. That was the, uh, the Superman cover, which oh, also yeah, has, yeah, a, yeah. has a has a sketch cover sketch variant. variant yeah, um, you know, Hush was a twelve issue run, so you know that means it's going to be a four part series that we're doing for this. This being part one, so we'll give our final review scores for the entire story. We'll do that in part four. So I think we'll call that a wrap for today. So Tom, can you tell everyone how they can find us and stay up to date with us on social media we are at tau capes on youtube twitter and instagram tau capes podcast on facebook you can also email us at tau capes pod at gmail.com if you enjoy the show please consider following us on your podcast platform of choice and subscribing to our youtube channel tau capes will return we want to thank you so much for listening until next time bye guys see you guys